Uh, we walked across the heath for a long time, yet no sight sprang up before our eyes. By turns, we discovered a verdant lowland, with several nearabout springs streaming down be behind another hillside. And then in the distance, in the center of the lowland, among the bush, stood there, there stood a single dry tree. A true giant! Its magnificent outline resembled an animal's paw clawing at the sky, but what was truly remarkable, the flat landscape was dotted by mysterious dark humps. They were piled about the height of a man and scattered in abundance. Yes, we determined we should explore the lowland. The further we trekked, the softer the land became. The step, step by step, heath grass gave way to moss. Low growing shrubs and ferns and then sloshy puddles of stinky swamp water. The muddy ground sucked at our feet, and soon our party was jumping from hassock to hassock. Finally, we reached the first group of mysterious humps and learned there were no mere hills, but dugout dwellings. We moved with great care towards the center of the lowland, and there the real swamp began. On the way toward the mysterious giant tree, we saw the foggy outline of another hut. This one much bigger and surrounded by small clay statues. Standing behind one another and tied together with a rope, we continued on our journey. We walked slowly, carefully choosing our way, keep, keeping t to drier ground as much as possible. But the further we went, the more difficult it became, and soon we were wading waist-deep through the cattails. Frogs croaked loudly as we peered into anxiously into the cloudy water, struggling to make out what shadows flitted among them, along the bottom. We often stumbled and lost our balance, but our trusty rope and the aid of our friends saved us from being lost to the bog. The insatiable bog gurgled hungrily after us, but we didn't look back. Sodden and weary, we finally made it back to solid ground and a palace of sorts rose before our eyes! A spacious hut made of mud like the rest, but decorated with pebbles, bones, cattail spikes, and snail shells. In the front of the palace was a wide and shallow reservoir. Its green water reflected the leaves of the huge ferns and primitive clay figurines. The buzzing of gnats was nearly deafening. We were not far to the center of the swamp, and a firm and steady path led there through the thick bushes. At its end, that tall, dry tree stretched mightily upwards, clawing at the firmament. We carefully examined the clay figurines, trying to fathom who they might portray. Ah! Goggle eyes, flatheads with no necks. Flatheads with no necks, ears, or chins. Ugly long legs unnaturally bent, these mysterious clay sculptures depicted some uncanny cross between a frog and a human. Peek inside the hut. Oh, snap! The palace was twice the height of the other huts, and its entrance was wide enough that three could walk abreast. The walls were decorated, an unknown builder had st scratched drawings into the clay while it was still wet. The faded scrawl depicted huge amphibians devouring smaller figurines, figures, I mean. Some frog-headed, others not. Three of the four rooms boasted large holes filled with water just like the other dwellings. Though here, there were steps descending into them, cut into the dirt. In the furthest room, we found equipment decorating the walls. Leather armor, spears, clubs, to our surprise, a number of items were well preserved. The hut was clearly deserted, so we felt no shame in taking some of it with us. The buzzing of gnats was nearly deafening. We were not far to the blah blah blah. Mm. It was ever so lovely to walk once along, again along the well-trodden path. Our soaked clothes imagined being dry, and our mood at once lifted. The bushes that bordered the path seemed to wave at us amiably, with their juicy green leaves and shiny bright red berries. A fresh wind puffed away the rotten smell, and it finally felt like the swamp might be nearly behind us. But then the wind stopped blowing and the thorny branches continued to move. And we heard a loud shout. Lindsay, who was watching our rear, pointed to a surging, clawing, crawling wall of green filling the, in the path behind us. 
The surrounding thicket was coming to life. Its branches reached out with a soft swishing sound. Drops of sap oozed from their thorns, gleaming in the emerald dusk. The path was disappearing. There was no way back. And the clear space ahead was closing. We ran forward as fast as our legs could carry us, flying towards the closing passage. Hm. Oh, fuck. Alas, we were not quick enough. Green walls closed in around us, branches grabbed at our sleeves, wicked thorns stretched, scratched our hands, and our faces burned with acidic ap sap. Roots tangled our feet, and our blood fell on the leaves, but with great, with great effort we broke away, at last, from the grasping green. Finally, after what seemed an endless trek, we came upon the gigantic tree that had so intrigued us from the beginning. Lo and behold, we saw an idol cut in its trunk. A huge horn, three-eyed toad. Its googly eyes made it look both cruel and dumb, almost idiotic. Its muzzle hung half open, sharp toothed with several hanging tongues. Deep brown streaks oozed from the corners of its mouth. Is it vomiting poop? Ugh. Fucking vomiting out diarrhea all of a sudden. Damn. We tried to glean what sort of idol it might be. Failed? Fucking god damn it. Sadly, we failed to glean whom the idol was devoted to. But it surely was not one of the lighter gods. But what is this? While we were examining the idol, a large bright blue dragonfly came out of the hollow came out of a hollow in the tree and sat invitingly on the very tip of one of our noses. It was so remarkably strange, it didn't react to our movements and it seemed quite content to remain where it sat. Ah uh, yeah, I don't want to do that. The idol reeked of evil, to say the least. We were certain that we must destroy it. Sure. Clearly we could not leave such an obs obscenity unscathed. We drew our swords and slashed at the wooden face. And from it oozed black sticky blood. We heard a great clap of thunder and a thick fog arose from nowhere. The birds screamed furiously. More thunder soon followed and with each strike the sky grew darker and darker. Soon we couldn't see the sun through the fog. The air shuddered again, but it was still thunder. Or, but what, was it still thunder or the creaky voice of the monstrous toad? Still, our iron blades dug deep into the blood-soaked wood, and at last the idol was smashed into splinters. The fog cleared away and the silence descent and silence descended. Suddenly, we realized that every frog in the swamp had gone quiet. We almost we turned with, almost with a sigh of relief and saw that the flesh-eating bush had withered away. Satisfied with a job done well, we turn, return to where we'd come from. Okay. I'm, on, I'm honestly curious about what would have happened if I had just eaten the fucking thing, but I'm, I prefer to just play chaotic good. Let's see, where shall we go? To the Thorn Ford! However, we must camp because we're fucking dying. Of course you failed. Glorious! Uh... Hmm. There's a new event in River Rhine Rise, I guess. I should go over there. What? Curse of the feeble body? Why do I have a permanent curse? 
It is done. No stopping now. Oh yeah, it's this fucking place. Yeah, avoid the water elemental. Kamehameha lands, I guess. Kill everything. Uh, I'll go over here. Resting would be nice, don't you think? Yeah, I just turn them the fuck around. I hate that I have to rest so goddamn often. Eventually, I'm gonna get ambushed. And then I'm probably gonna get killed, because... reasons. This game is hard. Oh. Cool. Sure, why not? Let's see what happens. Can you make a pose? I need inspiration. Ferocious monitor lizard? Damn it. Jesus. Why can't anyone? This is irritating. Stop attacking- oh. I tire of waiting. Cool! Monitor lizard scales. Is there anything else around here? There is nothing here. Oh, three pine islet. It is done. Oh, God! And then our leader charged forwards. Hey, wait for me. Oh, God. He, she died instantaneously, but that was entirely my fault. Oh, shit. Heal yourself. Live for a little bit longer. Oh my god, if I hadn't accidentally gotten... If I hadn't accidentally gotten Lindsay killed.
Haha, -ha, yes! Jesus. That was interesting. Follow me. What troubles you? Ooh. A small thing. I wrote it like oh, I thought. I'm sorry. I was lost in the world. We should move. No stopping now. Adventures await. What for Gorum? Check that out. 